Hey, what's up guys? We're gonna build something. My last screencast was about Guard and the build process, and then I had a follow-up blog post about build scripts and so forth, and I thought to myself, that's all very academic and interesting sounding, but wouldn't it be neat to actually do something with it? So we're gonna build a site. This is a semi-hypothetical site that uh, there's talk of building a site just for Impervious Surface for a number of reasons in Mecklenburg. We're going to build a site that's kind of like that. Impervious Surface is, you know, it's like a surface that water can't get through, so water runs off it. It's your rain tax. And let's just build that. We're not even going to talk about it anymore. We're just going to build something. The first thing I do when I get a new project, um, unless it's just something for me that I do in my brain, is I'll put a board for it on Trello. Trello is like a really awesome project management to-do list sort of thing. So you can set up your site here, and what I usually do is four columns, a to-do, a to-doing, and a done. And then a fourth column that's grok maybe, where I put terrible ideas that the customers have that I want them to know that I heard them, but I don't really want to do them. So that's how I set these up. You can make these public so you can give your your clients the URL and they can go see what you're doing on the project and what's done at any particular time, anytime they want. So it's a really cool thing. It's made by one of the Stack Overflow guys, completely free. Other than just telling you about Trello, we're not gonna do anything else with it. Now let's uh, start some actual fun coding stuff. We'll move this over here. We'll pull up Sublime and we're just going to use a plugin for Sublime called Fetch. Fetch is a, uh, well, it's what it sounds like. You can basically set it up to point to different like base templates, like zip files. It will go and fetch them and put them on your site and you can get started. I'm going to use a web template I built with Bootstrap and Leaflet. You can ask us where to put it. We're just going to make a demo folder. And it's going to go fetch it. You can see in the sidebar here, here's our demo folder, and it got all our stuff. Our guard file, our build scripts, our assets, our public folder, all our happy crap. Now the things we're going to want to edit are the main index page. Uh, oh, we don't want to edit that. That's in our public. That's getting built. We want to edit our main SAS file and our map and our page JavaScript. And that's probably about it. We'll go ahead and close that sidebar. Let's pull this up in a browser. Localhost code demo public. Here's our site. It's already working. You can do searches. You can pan and zoom, all that happy stuff. It's ready to go. First, let's rearrange this page a bit. Let's say we don't want to call this site title anymore. Why don't we rename this to Impervious Surface? And there's a couple places we need to do this. That's for like when the tiny bar, when it's all responsive -y. And down here in the Jumbotron subhead. <laughs> and in that one, we'll put beta next to it in our happy blue, this doesn't work site text and subtitle we'll just go we'll just put fuzzy tolerance no reason so now that should oh you know what else we should do before we do anything else before we should save we should start guard up so we'll see the dropbox code demo start guard we will hook our browser up to guard see browser now connected so now we hit save Happy day, all our title stuff has changed. Let's change this top color here. I like to change it for all the different sites. That way when I look at it, I can tell it's different. Now I don't pick these colors out myself because uh, I'm uh, not good with that. So I usually go to color lovers and I look for a palette I like because in theory those colors should kind of go with each other, hopefully. Uh, greens, let's see, this is impervious service. This would probably look like a green, like a blue to a green for our algae. Uh, what do you say? Mm, 
more pellets. This is where you can really, you know, spend all day just dorking around with things like this. We're not gonna, eh, nothing there I'm thrilled with. I want something a little darker in the blue range. Hmm. Oh no, that might be too light. We'll try it. Let's try a regular tea. We'll get a uh, new moon sky. In our SAS file, I just have these header colors up here because it's a number of different background gradient stuff depending on browser issues. Internet Explorer. And save that and go back here. And now it's kind of a, oh, what do you think? You know what, we're just gonna go with it. Nah, we're not gonna go with it, darn it. We're, we're perfectionist people and we will see better. We will not have this. How about, you know, hey, let's just go with this one. How about like that blue to that blue? I kinda like that. Right now you're going, oh, don't we just get on with it. We don't care about the colors. We've seen colors. Oh, I like that. See? Aren't you happy you waited? Yeah? All right. We've changed the color, changed out. We've done all our basic styling stuff-ish for the moment. Let's go to index.html. Right now we have the search bar up here. Don't really like that for this purpose. So let's get that out of there, out of the header. And we'll throw it after the welcome. And then after we throw it after the welcome, We'll make sure our stuff lines up right. Normally my search window is, or text window is not this narrow, but I have two monitors and I'm only recording one. So we don't need navbar form anymore. We just do form. Can be an in, let's see, probably form inline, I think is the bootstrap parlance. And we'll go don't need button inverse there, so you're not going to inverse the colors. And there's our search box. And then down below that, actually up above that, let's put, uh, we'll put happy introductory text we will fill in someday and get rid of all this Loris Ipsum shit. Okay, so now we got a shirt spo search box over there. Kind of laid out the way we want, color, shade that. Let's add some layers to the map. Let's say, well, let's go to a location so you can kind of see what they look like. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, we've zoomed in a bit. Let's go to our map. And here's where we added the base layer. Let's just add. Uh, a WMS layer. We'll make this for say topos. I personally think if your citizen has to interpret topo lines you've already lost but we're gonna add them anyway and we'll just say min zoom six we'll just go 16 to 18. Topos! I should say here, what I'm using here is a uh, just a code snippet. Whatever editor you prefer, it will have code snippets. Get to know them. It'll save you a ton of time. Let's add some impervious surface here. Say leave WMS. And we'll make this. Oh, this is out. I'm going to have to copy this in because this is, a, this is actually on ArcGIS server. So it uh, brings a little bit of the ugly there. Layers, we want zero and one. Oh, sidebar, Esri people. Uh, the whole numbering thing for the layers, dumbest possible shit. Don't do that. What happens is, is you're like, I'm getting layer three, seven, and five. And, you know, Bill up in accounting says, you know, I really need to know the dog crap collection points. And you add that to the service and everybody referencing those layer numbers, screwed. Terrible, terrible idea. You should use names there. End of rant. 
Anyway, we get layers zero and one, image two, back to geo, we'll go 16 to 18 there too. Hit save, now impervious surface. Hey, didn't that impervious surface draw slow? Yes, it did, sorry, GSR. Okay, we've got impervious surface and we've got, we've got, uh, that's probably enough for now. Now, we already have it doing a search and coming up with a location and we're doing that via PubSub because PubSub is awesome. And it lets you do neat things like conditional stuff, like when I'm adding to the history, if there's history API, what I can do, or I'm, uh, if there's a pop state, I can unsubscribe new history while it does that pop state. Things like that, you can manage subscriptions on the fly. You don't have like just hard coded in function calls and then like if thens to see if they really need to happen, which is just tacky and hard to maintain. So let's add a new subscriber to this map add marker. And this is really just, you can put any text there. And we'll call this um, impervious. I don't know. Impervious? All right. We'll call it impervious and we'll make a function down here. Uh, function impervious and we're going to pass it the same data that the search gets. And up in the search we have to add an extra thing here. In the search return in my latest version of the service, if the particular type of return has something special in it, it's in this little more info tag. So more info item or info. And that for an address is going to pass us the parcel ID, which we need. So now we got that, we got that. Now we need to make a call to a, a one of my uh, HTTP API web services. And this is just a code snippet, attribute query, uh, json p over get, table, it's like a to impervious surface area and fields. This will be a little complicated. We want sub theme, which is a type of impervious surface, and we want to do some aggregation. So if they have two buildings, it's going to come across as just building the square footed. And then parameters, here's where we want to say Common head equals begin quote, put in data dot more info, end quote, and then we're going to group by that sub theme. If I get this right on the first try, it will be a miracle. Order, order by the sub theme, and we don't want to put any limits on it. And if it works, it will console log the data. So let's save that. That'll make our page refresh. We will pull up our console and we will go, let's give it something. And now it is logging this data. It's console.logging right here when it gives a success. And it's saying area 525 and the sub theme is athletic court. I didn't even know there was such a thing. Huh. Sub theme, I mean. And the other one is building. Fascinating, huh? So now we've got the data from our service based on our search. Let's do some fun stuff. We'll stop console.logging this. And let's see. Oh, I should tell you about all this cool sublime tech stuff as I go by, I forget. Like control slash will uncomment code and it uses comment format or whatever you have your language set to. Uh, when you saw me put in stuff like a paragraph tag or something really quick, that was Emmet. I'll put links to all this crap in the show notes. So now we've got another console log. We need to put a catcher on our uh, page here. So we've got, here's our, our search form. Below that, we'll make a new div. This is Emmet new div with, let's see, uh, how do you want to do this? We'll make a paragraph for, paragraph, 
of class impervious in a div and we'll just hit tab and it'll make all that for us. There's different philosophies here. I've heard people that say putting catchers like this that are just there to receive stuff later is like a, just dumb. It's not good. Uh, I like to do this for two reasons. One, the less you're injecting into your DOM, the less DOM thrashing, the better. Second reason is, as a designer, you don't just want stuff appearing out of nowhere. Like if some text appears and you don't have anything there to catch it, like you're adding that p-class impervious on the fly, it's really hard to design that way. So that's why I put the catchers in there. End of, end of soapbox. So now we have a catcher in index.html. Let's do say... Mm, 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 mm. Well, not, not on the air. We don't know. Let's see. We'll go. We'll go. Don't have boot the dot. What did I name that thing again? Impervious. Is that all right? Did I name something else? No, it doesn't matter. Impervious. Say append. We'll go. We'll go. Strong. Uh, nah, that's kind of. Is that lame? Nah, we don't care. Just demo. Strong, and then we'll go. Concatenate, uh, let's see, row dot. What's coming up there? Sub theme. And we'll go a colon and end strong and add space. Then we'll go plus row dot area. And then we will carriage return that crap. Huh. I don't know if that's going to work or not. We'll try it. Look at that. So now we've uh, got our map. We've got our interface. We've designed our basics of our site. We're doing a search, showing layers, and we're doing an overlay, or actually in this case, just a query to get our square footage for uh, our stuff. Now, from, we've really built the crux of the site, most of the functionality. You will spend the next few hours just doing styling crap. This is all very open and plain. Uh, some introductory text. Maybe you have a uh, some links here and some links up here. If we weren't in a responsive mode because of the scroll bar, and you got links up here, you'll spend a lot of time doing that kind of tweaking stuff. So you're not done yet but you've got the core functionality built. How awesome is that? Now, if we think we're ready to build a, a test for our site, say we're on a sprint and it's sprint day and we gotta throw our crap out there, I do is just put myself on the guard file just so Sublime is in the right folder and I can make sure my project is set to use web app for build. I can just hit control B. But, oh! Before I do that, we can go ahead and get out of here. We will uh, uh, sh mod plus x fill dot sh. Huh. Try this again. Now it's going to go out and it's building and it's finished. What it did was it uh, concatenated, and Publix was going to go out to your website. It concatenated all our JavaScript and actually it's already concatenated. It minified all our JavaScript and it minified our CSS. Basically, did this stuff right here and it went through our index.html and where you have your stuff, like main.js, it changed this number on your main.js foo and on your foo for CSS. And that means when a browser loads your new index.html, it's going to invalidate the cache for your CSS and JS. You won't up, up with out of sync and broken stuff. So that's it. We just built something, a whole working site that fast. Uh, that's much more awesome than I was doing this even a few months ago. Things change all the time. Hopefully another month or two, it will be even faster yet. Hope you found that helpful. Bye-bye.